Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. If you're watching this on YouTube, would you go ahead and click subscribe for me? Uh, this way you always know when I drop a new episode and it makes it easier for other people to find my channel and to become better read makers and happier musicians. Thank you. I am responding to a question today about the windows of the oboe read. Uh, the question goes like this. I have a question about windows. Do you consider the windows to be everything from 49 or 50 millimeters up to 60 millimeters? Or are you thinking mostly about the 56 to 57 millimeter up to the 60 mark? I know I typically scrape the back or the windows somewhat evenly the entire distance with maybe a very few extra strokes just behind the plateau. That's what this person is asking. But I know other reed makers don't take too much out of the back and dig fairly aggressively right behind the plateau. What is your concept of windows? Interestingly enough, in last night's reed club, um, I was asked another version of like almost exactly the same question. So we did quite a bit of exploration of it in Read Club last night. And anytime I get a question multiple times in a short period of time, like that is speaking to me. There is something in the zeitgeist that uh, wants to know about oboe read windows, I guess. So I thought I would talk about that in today's video. My reads consistently seem to be seem to start right around 49 and a half or 50. They consistently seem to have um, a very, very soft W, almost more of a U at the very bottom. They broaden so that the rails which are wider here are much narrower up here. And I almost always wind up sacrificing this area of spine up here. I kind of just scrape toward, I, I think about the channels, but I allow my knife to cheat past the center in order to spare the rail there. And in my own conception, um, come back. And in my own conception, like I'm not not dug out down here, but I am much more heavily dug out just below the heart. And this proved to be consistent across nearly all of my finished reads, and by that I mean the ones that are in my actual case, the ones I would perform on, the ones I've tweaked enough for me to be comfortable with, this is pretty consistent. Like on this one, I've got more of a U shape at the bottom, but that same kind of structure right up to 60. And here's another example. Same. But, and look, it's a little... It starts a little bit lower. This one is clearly down at 49 or a little below. In fact, the whole reed seems a little shorter here. Like the the base of the heart is around 59. But like it doesn't matter. It, the, the structure and the shape is basically the same. But what an interesting thing is here are my day one reads. And like the reason that I'm exploring this in a long conversation at all is that I couldn't easily answer the question in Read Club last night. Like, I don't really think about the windows very much. I kind of just sort of hack them into place. And here is what I would do with a day one read. Like, you can see I haven't taken nearly as much in this read. Um, and the bottom is kind of raggedy. Like, the right side is lower than the left side. And it's not nearly dug out as much because this is just my first day scrape. I just sort of hammer the, the, uh, my knife at the reed and make it kind of look approximately like a reed. And that's all I do. So these three day ones, they all have some variability. They are not nearly as deeply dug. And like, look at this. I've got this like big sloppy cut in on the right side here. So I thought that having these three day ones sitting right here might offer fertile ground. Like, look at this one. I haven't even, I don't think I've even delineated the bottom of the heart. And this is much higher than the others. So um, because I've barely done anything here, I thought it could be useful to see what happens if I. And so that's my plan for today's uh, video. As I take a look at this read, um, I think what I'm going to do is the quickest 
finishing and like bringing up to a C crow. And then I will do something aggressively different in the windows and just see what it does. So all I'm doing is just cleaning up the sides and corners of the tip, polishing the heart, I'll clip, and then I will take some action on the windows. All right, so I've got my nice C crow. I've got my like basically functional reed with not too much scraped out behind the windows. And if I do my, how do I wanna do this? Let me just show you first what I do naturally. I sort of start with my knife down here around 48-ish, uh, 40, excuse me, 50-ish. And I don't really give any thought to where that actually starts. And as I scrape up vertically, thinking about the channel of the reed, as I get up toward the base of the heart, I just let my knife uh, broaden. I let my stroke broaden. And of course I'm doing that by, look, here's the curvature of the reed. Here's my knife coming in at a tangent. I could just scrape a, na a skinny, skinny line up the center of the channel. But as I get toward the top of the channel, I squish it a little bit, which enables that curvature to go away, which enables me to cut a wider channel. And um, again, I allow my knife to cheat across the center instead of cheating over the side because the rails are important. So that's what I would naturally do. And I stop my knife right up at the 60-ish mark. And that's the way I build this. What I feel like that did is it opened up the sound of the reed a little bit and it made my tip feel a little heavier, which is normal, right? Because as soon as I scrape back here and open up as aggressively as I just did, it changes the balance of the reed. So where it was responding at the tip before, now it's actually, there's some response moved back into the windows. Um, so to tidy up that tip, I'll just pet the kitty a little teensy bit. There, and then pop it on the oboe. Out of curiosity, I wonder what happens. Uh, so thing one, notice, um, I really don't cut in very deeply right here. My depth happens much more further up. I don't see a strong delineation in the center part of the reed as my questioner sort of described, but I am very consciously thinking about going downhill and sloping, and you can see it here, right? Sloping to there and then the heart gets thick again. I don't really slope there, and then my main slope is aggressive at the top. So that is what I am more or less going for. But I wonder, here's another day one, very similar to the first one. And so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna quickly clean the tip and heart and clip so that I've got uh, a more functional read. And then what I want to do, I think, is dig the heart uh, more strongly lower down. Like, I'm curious as to what happens if I just open up that whole back area more than I did. Instead of thinking about the heart as sloping, what if I think about the heart as generally thin? <laughs> Clip. So there's my reed. And if I go into that window area and 
go broader faster. So I'm broadening all the way down here. And then moving up into, oh yeah, this is kind of fun. So I feel like I've really gutted out that window. It's more thinner, lower down, and I've taken away more of the rail, although I have not actually sacrificed the rail. You notice that I sort of put a little notch in there. It's not a big deal. I'm just gonna lay my knife kind of horizontal and chip it back out. Okay, so with this much more open and broad compared to this one, window, I could even broaden it more now that I'm looking at it in the camera, but let's just try it for now. Um, here's my profile view. I see that it's more thin faster compared to this guy, I think. And the result, the crow is definitely dropped. And it's a little hard for me to find that tip response right now. What I'm feeling is that the whole thing is vibrating more, um, quite a bit more inside my mouth. Um, it's not exactly that it's wild, but it's not quite not wild. If I let go with my mouth and just sort of give it what it wants. It's a little bit hunky. I'm sure I can probably refine that. By balancing up in the tip a little bit more. But I found that interesting. Like it almost feels, I know this is a stupid metaphor, but you know, like when it first becomes spring and you first walk outside with shorts on and not long pants that like hold you in, you feel a little like weirdly exposed, even though shorts are a perfectly normal thing for a person to wear in the spring. Like it feels very uh, like vulnerable to have your legs all like in the breeze. That's what this read feels like. Now, given that different reads are different reads are different, I still feel a big difference with this guy, even though it's also a like B-ish, C-ish crow. C-ish. It just feels a little bit more constrained. Okay, here is another read. Um, this is another day one. I went ahead and did the tip and heart work off camera because like you can't just watch me make reads all day. This is silly. But what I notice here is that I've barely taken anything in the windows at this point. I want to see if I can do a really legitimately skinny scrape that doesn't leave a great big divot below the heart and what difference that'll make. Here's where it stands right now. The crow's a little bit low, but it's fine, totally functional. Throw a plaque in. All right, skinny scrape that doesn't go deep. Okay, skinny scrape. Not deep. Profile, almost straight. There's an almost no waistline here. It did drop the crow. Clipping, I should do this on camera. So 
So this read feels similar to before. I feel like there's maybe, um, I did drop the crow, I did clip, so of course it changed, but I, the big thing I notice that is different between this and the ones that I did before is that it feels springier in my mouth and more open, which makes sense because for sure this like gutting out that I normally do right below the heart um, helps me to collapse the reed because I don't want to have to bite. I don't want to have to put a lot of muscle into managing the opening of the reed. Uh, so that is a thing I definitely notice. Does it have significantly less depth or less anything than these guys that I did before? Let's find out. <coughs> this was read number one. This was read number two, where I tried to broaden it more and dig it deeper. Which is definitely less stable. And here's this read where I've made a skinny, skinny set of windows that don't cut in deeply. I can hear the... Um, there's a, a, I like the responsiveness of this read, but there's a shallowness to it that I think I would, that I could change by digging out a little bit more. But look, but look, my reads are structured the way they are because I like them that way. And because over the years and decades, my reads have evolved along with me to match the way I play. And, of course, when I change a single variable dramatically, um, it's going to make the read less attractive to me because I've already optimized it to match what I like to do. But my goal in these videos is to help you see what these various parts of the read do do and how you can use those actions and those effects to create something that you want. So as I'm working on the windows, like it's no surprise that I like my regular way best. But if you heard something that you liked as I uh, skinnied out and de-emphasized the wall between the heart and the window, uh, with my, that third read, if you liked um, how flexible the second read sounded after I like sort of gutted out that window area, that is something that you can use in your own read making. So I hope that this has been helpful. This has been a five minute read maker lesson. You can follow these videos on YouTube. You can subscribe if you wish. I hope you will. If you need to reach me to order Reads or Cane, a copy of my book, to reach out to me uh, with questions that I could answer in a future read video, to pick up my full uh, video course, Zero to Read Maker, to join Read Club, where we can talk about reads any Monday night. Like, these are all sorts of ways that I can help you, and all of them are available from my website, JanetIngle.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.